this is Lady Boulay, and I hope you're having a most marvelous day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. And yes, we are commanded to love one another. I'm still reeling from this whole idea about the brick throwing. And not only the brick throwing, but also the incident with Spice from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta being called a blue monkey. So I'm entitling this video, this is why black immigrants need a relationship with black Americans. Both of these women are immigrants to the United States. Spice on the left migrated from Jamaica and Robichi on the right migrated from Somalia. Both of these women were violated. One was physically violated and the other one was emotionally violated because calling somebody a name like a monkey is an emotional violation of your humanity. So both of them were violated. Now, there would have been a time when really nothing would have been done about either one. But the all-seeing eye of social media has the ability to get the word out when something happens. And once that word is out and a violation has occurred, then the public goes into action. Nobody goes into action faster and more forcefully than black American women. Black American women would take on any issue. And because of the buying power, because of the influence of black American women in social media, they can make something happen. And it doesn't take long. People do themselves a disservice when they underestimate the influence of black American women. When black women start talking, tweeting, YouTubing, Instagramming, and doing all the other stuff that black women do on social media, Big Brother listens. Black women can make changes, and that is what black women did with these women. The woman that called Spice a blue monkey on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta was fired, but only after there was pressure from the public, and that pressure came primarily from black American women. Now, some people say, well, she's gone. She's got other projects. She's doing this, that, and the third. Well, she, she sounds like she's going to need it. And she needed that job, too, because if she didn't, she wouldn't have been on there. The power of social media and black women becoming outraged about something that they didn't like got her fired. We didn't know the Somali woman, so she was not a celebrity, but she came to our attention because she came on social media crying because of what somebody had done to her. And the public sympathized with her. I think everybody who saw that, women in particular, sympathized with her. But it's black American women who have been making video after video after video about that incident, including myself. And black men have been making videos too. They haven't always been favorable but they've been making videos about her. So that's still black Americans putting that incident in the spotlight. So something can be done about it. Now what we know is that she put up a GoFundMe and she has raised $35,000, $40,000. They say she doesn't have any insurance. And being an immigrant, their situation is always sort of shaky. It's always shaky. So that is why it's important for them, especially the immigrant women, to network with black American women because black American women would get on the case. And once that brigade gets on the case, help is on the way. And for the people who say that she doesn't identify as black and she calls black Americans names, that's not true. I have gone to her social media pages. She is steeped in black American culture. This is one of her pages and on it she says, Black girls look incredible in yellow. The sun and us get each other's shine. On this page she calls herself angry black Muslim woman. Here she's posing like a random black woman from America or anywhere else. Now the reason that I say black immigrants need a relationship with black Americans is because we don't really need a relationship with them 
it's nice if we reach out to them, but we don't really need the relationship with them in the same way that they need a relationship with us. Black Americans are the only ones that are going to be concerned about any problems that black immigrants have in the United States. And that is most notable when they have problems with the police. Ben Crump gets out there and fight just as hard for justice and compensation for black immigrants as he does for black Americans. And also, black immigrants need to understand that there is nothing that they're going to be able to do in the United States that black Americans haven't already done on some level. So they're not blazing any new trails. And they, for all of the bragging that they do, they really don't make that much difference in what's going on in America. From sports, to music, to education, to anything you can name. Anything that they are doing in America has already been done by some black American. And you would think that they would want to network with people who look like them to get a heads up on how to get ahead or to maximize their American experience. And I will say this, one of the dumbest things about black immigrants to the United States is that they don't value history. For all of their talk about culture, they do not value culture or history because what they think is American culture is really black American culture. And when you're talking about American history, if black people are not at the center of that discussion, you are not talking about American history. And I believe that that is the reason why many black Americans do not really jive, you might say, with black immigrants. Because it's hard to respect people when they don't have basic understanding about a civilization. America is a civilization. And they are not the least bit curious about how this civilization came into being other than believing everything that people who colonized their countries, which means that they are known liars, told them. They have no curiosity about black Americans or indigenous people. All they want to do is come over here and be white people. Now, I hear them say, well, I just want to come over there and make money. I just want to come over there and make money. Well, you still need to respect the culture, the history, the people, and the civilization that they built. Because these immigrants, black and non-black immigrants, their hopes and dreams of being able to assimilate into white society and nest in some into white society, that is a pipe dream. White society in America is very selective and many of these immigrants think that they're gonna come in and choose to be in white society, not realizing that white society selects who they want in. You don't come in just because, oh, I'm not like those black Americans. No, you don't. You're just going to fool yourself until something happens. And then when something happens, because you won't listen to black Americans, then they start screaming about America is racist. When they learn that the hard way, then they become bitter against America when they could have chosen an alternate route, network with the people that look like them, and seen something very spectacular that people who are really gifted can build a dynamic superpower civilization in a very short period of time. Something they didn't do back in their homeland, but they don't have the understanding because they don't have an appreciation for the hard work that, that went into building America, even though they claim they believe in hard work. And that's how come I think a lot of them really aren't smart. They think they're smart, but they're really not. So I think I'm sharing a very realistic and possibly helpful point of view for people who come to the United States who are not white, who are from Africa, and who really want to make the best of their experience in the United States because you are black in America. If black Americans think you're black, then everybody else think you're black too. 
and it doesn't make any difference how many videos you make saying you're not black it doesn't change the fact and i'm insulted by the immigrants who come here acting like they think being a black american is the worst thing in the world knowing damn well we get treated better than they do anywhere else in the world and they're so cowardly that when somebody tells them that they don't like them or that they don't like Africans, they'll drag black Americans into it. Oh, but they just don't like the black Americans. No, they don't like your ass either. And that's, that's, that's really offensive to me that they think that they're somewhere on a different place than black Americans when they're worse off than black Americans because they have to run from their homeland. And I also am offended by the fact that they think we're so dumb that we don't know how they actually get treated when they go to these other countries, especially in Europe, but also in Asia. They treat them like garbage, and they know it. But then they're trying to make it seem like, oh, they are treated so much better than those black Americans. You are not. And nobody wants them in their country, and they know it. But when they come to the United States, they put on a veil of delusion and they operate out of that delusion until something happens. And eventually something will happen because America doesn't change or step back for anybody, especially anybody black. But I do have compassion for black immigrant women because they will get it not only from the society, the dominant society, but they're also going to get it from the men in their communities. So I believe that it would be to their advantage to network with black American women because when something happens, black American women will advocate for them. But okay, y'all, that's what I think about it. But let me know what you think. Thank you for listening. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.